This video is to show you how to compile and debug the Cypress USB firmware. This is the block diagram of the interface between the USB and the FPGA chip. Port A is the data bus to transfer and receive data from the FPGA. Port D is the control bus to perform asynchronous handshaking. Open up the KO IDE on the top, go to Project, click Open Project, then double click the project file that's been given to you. Async FIFO is the file you should be focused on. Ignore the other files. Right click on the target one folder, then click rebuild target to recompile the project. This is just to make sure there are no errors and warnings. On the top, click debug, then click start debug session. When you start your debug session, you'll see this dialog pop up on the screen. Just press OK. This is the start of the microcontroller code. Do not modify anything within the main function. On the left, click on the first tab, then double click on the async FIFO file. Scroll down to the TD initialization function. This function is to have configured a USB engine, so do not modify anything in this function block. Scroll down further. What you will be focused on is this TD poll function block. This function is used to communicate and control the FPGA. For debugging purposes, you can right click a single line of code, then click insert breakpoint option. This will tell the debugger to stop at this exact line. Set a breakpoint here as well, then click run to execute the code all the way to the first breakpoint. We can see the debugger has stopped at the first breakpoint. Here we can check the reset FPGA variable is 4 in hexadecimal format. Right click on the variable and add it to the watch window. This allows us to see what the variable is throughout the entire debugging process. Step into this function. On the top, click Peripherals, then I.O. Ports, then click Port 0 for Port A. This opens up a window that allows us to virtually toggle the pins on this microcontroller. Open up Port 3 for Port D. As you can see, Bit 0 on Port D is a reset signal for the FPGA. This port D is set by a variable called BM Reset FPGA. Run the code again to get back to the first breakpoint. We can see in the watch window that this value has changed. We need this value to be 1 to reset the pointer and state machine, then 0 to get out of the reset function. Once the value is 0, we jump out of the function and set the bit in port D to 0. Step one line and you'll see the port window be toggled off. If we refer back to the block diagram, Bits 5 and 6 on port D are the acknowledge and the done and slash empty signals. You can manually click on the boxes to simulate the FPGA behavior to send you, the USB chip, these signals. This program has been developed to test to see if you have done the state machine correctly. This is what will happen. The program will connect to the USB module. You will then enter a string of characters to encrypt. Click encryption to send the string to the FPGA. The program will send this hex string through the USB chip, then to the FPGA, then back to the computer. Click on the decryption button to send the encrypted string back into the FPGA. It should display the decrypted values on the bottom. The top and bottom hex fields should match exactly. If it is, then you have completed the project.